Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. And that's our heart for you is that the glory of God fills your home and that you get saturated with the presence of God. We're so glad you're joining us on this Hope Today on Friday. I'm here with Anna Fry and Matt Cogley. And we're really excited because we're going to be talking about the glory today Come on, on our the program. Glory. What, what a way to start it off. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited about our, our guest that we've got today. Uh, his name is Jamie Fitt. He's a director of Philadelphia Tabernacle of David. And so we're going to get into a really, really good topic. I know he's experienced a lot, especially in our country and around the world of what God's doing. And I think we need to hear what he has to say, especially for today. Anna. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's so awesome to just be reminded to fix our eyes on Jesus, that even when things around us are a bit chaotic, that all we have to do is turn our eyes on Jesus and everything falls in place. And it is also Mother's Day weekend. I Let's just have go. to like do a quick pivot right into that and wish all of the moms out there a very happy Mother's Day. I cannot wait to be with my mom. I also get to be with my grandma who is 90 years old, but don't tell her I told you that on television. And uh, I'll have my kids with me too. And so it'll just be such a blessed time, you guys. We're yeah. so thankful for moms. It is the hardest job on earth. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I'm not a mom. I am yeah. a dad, so I can't take all the credit for, <laughs> for the kids. So I do give, I'll give a shout out first off to my mom, but a shout out to my wife, the best mothers I know on the planet, right? What are you, what are you doing for this Mother's Day? So I don't know yet. I think my mom and I were going to be hanging out on like my porch because I'm so excited I went to at home and I like redecorated my outdoor, the outdoor space. And so I just want to say my mom watches all the time. And I just want to say I love you, mom, and I have my grandmother. But I also want to say a big shout out to the spiritual moms out there. I know That's there's true. so many women that have poured in my lives and the lives of other people that literally just took the time to pour in the word of God and to use correction or to speak into destiny. And so just want to encourage you, maybe you don't have children, but just be thankful that God has put, you know, young people around you to pour into, because I'm just saying there's a whole generation that we need the older and the wiser to pour into us. And so we, I just want to say thank you to all of you that do that day in and day yeah. out. I also want to just take a moment too to recognize that Mother's Day, although it is happy for many, it is also a very hard day for many. We know that uh, some of you watching may have lost a child or there is estrangement with a child, which I can certainly relate heart to heart, connect with you there. Um, and also those of you who have maybe lost your mom. And so we want you to know that we see you, we love you, you are not alone. We just pray that you'll still be surrounded with people who do love you, celebrate the day and celebrate truly all the blessings that God has given you. You know, and why don't we real quick, since we got a minute, you want to pray for all the moms out there? Just oh, kind of encourage sure. them real fast. Absolutely, love to. God, I would just thank you for the gift of motherhood. Lord, that you have raised women up to be life givers, to uh, have an eternal impact on the children who have been entrusted to them. Lord, I just pray that uh, this Sunday especially, that moms will just feel so loved that they will feel seen, that they will feel valued, Lord. And we know that no matter what, God, your love for them is perfect and unconditional. Lord, just wrap your arms around each one of them and encourage their hearts and bring children and parents together to celebrate. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Mothers are a big deal, man. We celebrate all you mothers out there watching. Thank you, seriously, for being stable, faithful, and strong, and for everything you do. It is not an easy task or responsibility as a mother, but we're thankful for all the moms out there. Hey, stay with us between our, or when we return in 60 seconds. We're going to be joined by Jamie Fitt, and he's going to share a fresh prophetic word that you're not going to want to miss. We'll be right back. Cornerstone Television exists to spread the good news through Bible-based programs and a fully staffed prayer line. Through CTVN, lives are saved, hearts, minds, and bodies are healed, and Jesus is lifted high. We can't do this work without you. Would you consider sending a gift this month to keep the gospel moving forward with power? When you give, we'll send you Listen, Love, Repeat, which presents scriptural examples of those who lived alert, including Jesus, who noticed those who least expected to be seen, gives creative ideas for showing love to friends and family, 
suggests practical ways to reach out to the lonely, marginalized outcast, helps you comfort the grieving, and so much more. Ask for your copy of Listen, Love, Repeat when you give today. Call 888-665-4483 or go to ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for your generosity. Hope happens here. Well, our next guest has been serving the body of Christ in worship and teaching for over 20 years. Jamie Fitt from Philadelphia, where he is the director of Philadelphia Tabernacle of David, a ministry that he co-founded along with his family. Jamie joins us now to provide a fresh and timely message that God has laid on his heart to share. Jamie, welcome to Hope Today. Thank you so much. It's yeah. good to be here. Yeah, you know, we're so excited to have somebody here live in person in the flesh. You know? <laughs> and so it's always so good to have somebody here it's in the good, studio. It's good to be here. Yeah, so Jamie, maybe you can just tell us and your audience a little bit about you. You know, how did you get to where you are today? Yeah, so um, when I was in my kind of late teens, uh, the Lord really grab my heart and just uh, give me a passion for worship. Mm -hmm. And so my family and I actually started a, a family worship team. Uh, it was my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister, my now brother-in-law and okay. his mother. Okay. So wow. it was a big family affair and uh, many of us are still uh, ministering together. Yeah. Um, and uh, that was our worship team. And somewhere along the lines in the early stages of that, uh, the Lord kind of sneak attacked us and, and immersed us in this thing called the Tabernacle of David. And we didn't even know that that's what it was, but um, we started to do these extended times of worship and prayer and started to learn about the Tabernacle of David. And since then, that's been where the Lord's had us. And we've just been pursuing that. Uh, and and our, our nuclear family has grown into a, a spiritual family citywide wow. in Philadelphia. Wow, I, love I love that you're, you're worshiping together as a family. You know, that's important. I mean, me as a worship leader, I know the importance of it, especially being able to do that, you know, corporately, but as a family as well. I know it's got to be powerful. Yeah, right? and now the cool thing is my kids are starting to get involved. Wow. wow. So that's wow. really good. My daughter and my son have some real interest in mm -hmm. participating in worship. And my daughter co-leads with us at the church occasionally. Okay. So it's really, really cool. cool. Three generations together. Wow. Yeah, man. Wow. Oh, that's great, a legacy. Well, so, okay, so tell us a little bit about this ministry, you know, the Tabernacle of David. So you told us a little bit about how to start, but what did God kind of really, how did that come alive in you? And how did you start to see it? And, and what are, you know, what's kind of the vision of this ministry? Yeah, so uh, the Tabernacle of David, biblically speaking, was the place where David established just face-to-face -face worship mm -hmm. with the Lord. Uh, it was really kind of illegal in its time, so to speak. Uh, the tabernacle of Moses, which is really the order of the day, uh, put a veil up against the presence of God. And so, you know, you could not really engage with that. But David said, you know what, I just want to surround the, the, what, what was symbolic of the manifest presence of God, the Ark of the Covenant, with worshipers and singers day and night. And so that's what he did. But from that, what began to happen is Israel began to come into its most prosperous age ever. And so this tabernacle of David became a nuclear power plant, is the way I kind of <laughs> uh, like to express it, for the kingdom expression in that time. And so what our heart is, is that in Philadelphia and in all the cities of this nation and the nations of the earth, there would be places where there are nuclear power plants mm -hmm. to fuel the power and presence of the kingdom wow. in our cities. Mm -hmm. And that comes through worship prayer, hosting the presence of God, hearing what he's saying and declaring the word of the Lord over our cities and nations. You know, JB, I've had an, ex I've had an opportunity to experience that like through your, like the power of worship. Can you just like take our audience in because some might not fully understand what that looks like in a worship context because it is very different when you're talking about digging in deep in a prophetic flow. Can you just explain what that looks like in a setting? Yeah, I think a lot of our worship um, stops at a, a place of inspiration. Um, and I think really the Lord wants to bring us to a place of revelation and transformation. Yes. And those are different things. So a lot of what we experience, I think, in worship sometimes is we get the goosebumps or we whatever, and it makes us feel good. But what we really believe is that God wants to really have, we want to, he wants to encounter us. Mm -hmm. And so it go, that goes beyond those goosebumps. It's the moments when we actually are face to face with him and he begins to speak to us. And not only are we singing to him, but he's singing over us. And that's a weird concept to some people, but the Bible says 
God sings over us and he sings over his people. And so he begins to release his songs over us, but not just us. He releases his songs over cities and over regions and his heart begins to come forth in that. And that's where the place of transformation comes in because we're really changed by one thing and that's the word of the Lord, yes. right? It begins to work in us and change us and it begins to work in our cities and in our, our, our nation. And so, you know, going to a, a, a little bit of a deeper place in worship, I think is so important and yet so challenging in a lot of our modern church yeah. settings. Yeah. And I just wanna ask you real quick, because I, I lived in Philadelphia. And so how have you seen this prophetic worship transform that city? Because there's a lot of strongholds. There's a lot that is going on in the city of brotherly love. So how have you seen prophetic worship impact? Well, you know, it's true. And, and um, what you're saying about Philadelphia, there's a lot of challenges. Um, and if people listen to the news media, they'll hear certain things. But what I try to share with everybody that I get a chance to talk to about it is there is something happening in Philadelphia. It's below the radar, it's underground. But what we've been praying into um, specific, very specifically for about 15, 20 years now, um, and what others have been praying into a lot longer than that. There's many who've been on the wall longer <laughs> than, than we have. Um, but. Um, you know, what we're beginning to see is we're beginning to see the church come together in an unbelievable way. We're beginning to see true apostolic and prophetic leadership rise up in the city and begin to uh, bring a vision as to how we can actually impact our city, not just with our own human efforts, but how we can enter into divine strategy because our, really our human efforts are not enough. And that's what we found out in Philadelphia over and over again. And so what I see is, I see a lot of on the surface, a lot of issues, but I see the real answers rising up. And so I'm, I'm actually greatly encouraged by what God's doing in Philadelphia. And I believe there's lots of cities where he's doing similar things. Yeah. You know, you were talking, or we were talking a little bit earlier about just some of the things that are happening in Philly and that you've experienced, you know, maybe you could expound, expound a little bit on that, how, you know, whether there's a spirit of heaviness or whatnot, getting people's focus off of that, but how do they begin to, you know, cause it's not just leaders or pastors or those who are typically in like full-time ministry, right? I mean, it's everybody. So how could everybody get their eyes and their focus off of this heaviness and onto God or whatever he's calling them to do? Yeah, I mean, that, that's a, a, a great question and a great struggle that we've had. Um, you know, in Philadelphia, we have, like many cities, you know, murder rate that has spiked. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a massive opioid uh, challenge. Wow. Um, we're one of the poorest big cities. Mm -hmm. um, and so those are some of our challenges in the natural, right? Mm -hmm. But when you look at that and you see all these felt needs around you, the temptation for ministries is to just immediately want to run mm -hmm. and go and meet those needs. And we need that. We do need those kinds of things. But one of the things we've been trying to call people back to and try to encourage them with is to say, listen, we need to come back to the presence and power of God in what we're doing. And so there's a temptation to just want to do, do, do. I've actually had pastors say to me, I'm too busy to pray. Wow. And I'm thinking, you know, we, we just, that's a, you know, it's, it's a shame that they feel that way. And I understand mm -hmm. it because the needs are so in your face. Yeah. But the reality is that when Jesus, you know, told his disciples, look, the fields are white unto harvest. You know, that he didn't say, therefore, get out there and get going and you, you don't have time to waste. And all that. He didn't say that. He said, therefore, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out the laborers. And so we believe, and, and what we're, the passion our ministry carries is to call people into that place of prayer and worship and the presence of God first and let God birth initiatives out of that. You know, because what we do so many times in our own strength, you know, the Lord says in Zechariah 4, right? Not by power, not by might, not by your power, not yes. by your might, but by the spirit of the Lord. And that's one of the things we're really, really coming back to. And I think for all the, the viewers that would see this, mm -hmm. we're in a season right now where we're leading up to the day of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. And I think it'd be a wonderful time for all of us to begin to just say, you know what, Lord, we want to turn our hearts mm -hmm. back to your spirit. Yes. We want to we surrender the things we've done in our own efforts and, the, and the, the challenges that we've tried to face in our own wisdom. And we wanna come right back to that place where we say, Lord, we gotta come into your presence first. We need your strategy. We need your wisdom. And so the Lord says to stand in his counsel. And even in those times 
when it looks like we know what to do, David was amazing at this, right? He just, even when they took you know, Ziglag in 1 Samuel 30, they came in and they took the women and children and they said, you know, David, of course, the answer is like, let's go back and get them, right? Yeah. But David, it says he inquired of the Lord, should we go pursue? And so I think, you know, many times we skip that step and the Lord's really calling us back to that place of presence, prayer, worship, and prophetic understanding. Yeah, you know, I, we've been seeing that here in Pittsburgh happen too. You know, just last year we had the Pittsburgh Praise to where we gathered all the churches from around the city to come together, but the main focus was prayer. And so I know we were kind of joking a little bit earlier that I, I feel like maybe the reason why there's not a heavy emphasis on prayer is because some people just really don't know how to pray, right? And I'm sure that's a part of your ministry right now as you're kind of seeing that, witnessing that. Maybe you can go into that a little bit deeper, like why pray? What's the reason we pray? It's not something, it's not tradition. It's not something we do just before bed or dinner, right? You know, right. why should we as a church, as the body of Christ, as the ecclesia on the earth, be prayers first? Yeah. Well, I think prayer and worship are our primary places. Uh, and of course, the word of God, but they're, they're the primary places where we can encounter the presence of God. And the presence of God is the only thing that separates us mm -hmm. from the other organizations that are out there doing wonderful things. Yeah. The, the other social justice or whatever it is that, that the ones that are out there, you know, trying to make a difference and trying to help. And that's good. I, I'm, I'm not against any of that. But what makes us different as the church? What makes us unique? What do we offer that we don't offer with, you know, th that other organizations don't offer. Mm -hmm. It's the presence of God. And if we are not saturated in that place, if we're not immersed in the presence of God, we're uh, diminishing what we have to offer mm -hmm. to the world around us. The, the world has, has drank from so many uh, streams that did not satisfy. Mm -hmm. And if we want to actually have living water to give to people, then we've got to actually be in the presence of God yeah. so that that living water can begin to flow out of us. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, you know, out of your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. That speaks of the power and presence of God and the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. moving in us and through us. And so prayer and worship is the primary place we engage that. Wow. It's absolutely essential. And what, what, what should that look like for maybe someone that's at home? I think a lot of times some people kind of come to church and they feel like that's the place that they're only to be doing it. But right, this is supposed to be a lifestyle. You know, a day, I mean, the Bible says to pray without ceasing, pray at all times, right? With all sorts of prayers. Yeah. So maybe you could speak to that, somebody that's sitting at home and say, okay, what should this look like for me on a daily basis? Yeah, I think, um, I think that prayer for some people can become a... Uh, strictly, I've got a prayer list. Mm -hmm. and, and listen, prayer list is wonderful. If yes. you've got a prayer list, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. But what I'd encourage people to do is more than coming with an agenda. Mm -hmm. One of the things the Lord really wow. uh, had to train me in mm -hmm. is what I call secret place time, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, other people might have different names for it. Uh, that's not really the important point. The important point is the, the heart of it. And the heart of it is that we come before God with no real agenda other than to say, Lord, I just want to be with you. Yeah. And maybe there are some burdens of your heart that you need to lay down, mm -hmm. but also to say, Lord, I want to hear what you have to say. Mm -hmm. I want to be open to receive what's on your heart. Yeah. I think so many times we're so preoccupied with our thoughts and our ideas and, our, and, and what's on our heart yeah. that we don't have even ears to hear wow. what's on God's heart. So for the person at home, you know, take that time, take that, even if it's just 20 minutes or something, take some time, get before the Lord, be quiet, listen, you know, confess any things that are going to be a hindrance between you and the Lord, yeah. but then just try to, to sit in that place mm -hmm. and hear and receive. And out of that, begin to pray wow. because that really, I think is, is where we, when we quiet our own yes. souls, yes. when we can begin to hear what ha what's happening in the spirit dimension. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that's so important uh, for so many people because a lot of prayer stays on that soulish level where it's yeah. our mind, will, and emotions that are right, really right. Uh, calling the shots. But if we would daily engage with the Lord wow. in that place of spirit to spirit, mm -hmm. it would absolutely change our relationship mm -hmm. with the Lord. Absolutely. Really it's so powerful. Yeah. It's so powerful. Like that really speaks to me, even as we're talking about um, corporate worship and the issues that we see in our cities, in our world, but how important it is 
like so many homes are struggling, marriages mm -hmm. are struggling, families are struggling, and how could our families be transformed if we start in our home and start praying and worshiping right where we're at? Absolutely, I mean, I think that, you know, the home is the first altar, right? right? Mm -hmm. um, that we, ha you know, we, we have to tend as, um, as believers, right? And so um, that's the beauty. And that's why even though the tabernacle of David was a thousand years before Jesus, right? So, you know, 3,000 years ago, it's this thing that we think of as old. What David was doing was he was saying, even in a time when it was illegal technically yeah. to have that face-to-face -face encounter with the Lord. He was saying, this is what God wants. Yeah. And he wants it everywhere. He doesn't want it just at a church. Mm -hmm. He wants it in our homes. Mm -hmm. He wants it in our day-to-day our -day walk with him, that we would have face-to-face -face fellowship and communion with him. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and to, to circle back to what we were saying about, you know, citywide initiatives and, and, and to bring it down to the micro level of the home, so much of what we do, again, operates out of our soulish dimension. And we may see a measure of fruit with that. But if we can come to that place where we really hear the Lord, even for our family members, even for our, our wayward children, you know, when we can really hear the Lord for them, then we're going to know how to minister to them better. Mm -hmm. You know, I know as a father, you know, you have desires for your kids, you have things. And, and there's so many times where the Lord's just like, don't, don't press there, don't push there, don't, yeah. you know, because let me work, let me do this. And if we just work in that soulish realm, we can actually sometimes do more harm than good. But if we can have our, our homes be places of prayer and places of presence and places where we engage the Holy Spirit, we're gonna see dramatic fruit. Jane, is that what, what you feel in your spirit right now? That's what God is saying to us, where it's like we have to get out of this place of the soulish realm and come up higher to a spiritual realm because it's ve there's a very drastic dis dis mm -hmm. um, distinction when you're there. Is that what you feel God is saying in this season to the body of Christ? I do. I do. I really believe that, you know, um, even um, I, I, I'm, I'm personally a little concerned about some of the things I see even in the worship movement mm -hmm. that I, I love how worship has become more like mainstream in a sense. But, you know, there's a sense where it could become a little bit in that place of the soulish realm. And, you know, we can, again, artists who don't even have the Holy Spirit, they can touch the soulish realm, mm. yeah. you know, but we as believers carry something so unique. And this is my prayer for, of course, worship leaders, you know, that kind of thing. But artists of any kind that are believers is allow God to give you something that would transcend the soulish realm and begin to hit people in their spirit realm. And, and one of the beautiful things about music and art is it, 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 it immediately bypasses some of our defenses. Uh, some of the walls we put up right away because it, it just speaks immediately. So how much more so could we do this if we said, Lord, take me to a deeper place beyond just one of impacting uh, people's emotions to really wanting to be able to hit that spirit realm and so, yeah, when we engage with the Lord in that dimension, then we can release that to others. And it's so powerful. And we would just like you to take a moment just to pray for that, for us to have that revelation that we get into that secret place so that soulish realm diminishes and we can really just operate in that flow. Can you pray for our viewers? Yeah, today? yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Father, we thank you today, Lord, that you are calling your people to a deeper place in you. And Lord, I thank you that even those listening now, Lord, and, and all those who will see this broadcast, Lord, I thank you that you are inviting them into a deeper place. Father, I thank you that you're helping us, as David said in the Psalms, to learn how to calm and quiet our soul, Lord, so that our spirit can receive from your spirit. Lord, we thank you that deep cries out unto deep. And Lord, that you are causing a, a, a people to arise in the earth who would be joined spirit to spirit with you. Lord, I thank you that your word says, even in reality, that he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Lord, I thank you that we are connected. But Lord, I thank you that even today, you're releasing a grace over us to allow our soulish dimension to just be 
put out of the way, Lord, to, to silence those things that so often keep us from hearing really, truly what your spirit is saying. And Lord, we want to know that in our hearts, we're carrying those seven flames of the living God, those seven spirits of God in us. And Lord, one of those is the spirit of might. And so, Lord, I thank you that you would strengthen us with might in our inner man. Lord, that our spirit man would be strengthened and arise in Jesus' name. Amen. I love that so much, Jamie. I feel like maybe we can take a couple minutes here just to minister to those at home, but just the word strength, you know, is popping out to me in, in, in this moment. And, and maybe you just are feeling just a heaviness that's on your life. And what kind of what Anna was saying earlier, maybe for just any single moms or single parents or what might be going out there, but can we just say it's, it's in our weakness when God is made even stronger. And so if you're hearing anything that's going on here and something's just ministering to you, you know, we would love to be able to pray with you. We'd love for you to uh, reach out and connect. Uh, call us at 888-665-448. Eight, three. We believe in the power of prayer, and especially when we come together in agreement. And you know, as, as we wrap up here, Jamie, I just want to talk real quick because I, I feel like as we're talking about prayer and that being still, you mentioned a little bit earlier that it's kind of in those being still when you kind of hear what your assignment is, you know, and I know um, we have a couple minutes, but God's called you on assignment to like Israel, you know, um, explain a little bit about that real quick, you know, being in still, how can we hear from God and what will we hear from God whenever we're just still like that? Yeah. Uh, I believe, you know, what happens sometimes is people think, well, I'm not a pastor, I'm not a leader, I'm not this. Um, and so they think that they don't have assignments. God has assignments for every single one of us. And some of them may be broad in scope, some of them may be very specific. It does not matter. The, the, what matters is our faithfulness to the assignment. And so I want to encourage every person to just begin to seek the Lord about, Lord, what what do you want me to do? What, what lives am I to touch? Where, where am I to go? How am I to move? And how am I to operate? It's so important to, to understand that. And, uh, you know, God doesn't reward prominence. He rewards faithfulness. And so whether it's big or little, you need to come back to that assignment and say, Lord, help me to do what you've called me to do. Well, just the, the final words of today, it is in the place of God's presence where there is transformation. This is the season where God is calling us to take our eyes off of the things around us and fix our eyes on Him, get out of the soul realm and go deeper still into the spirit realm. He wants to give you greater vision, greater faith, greater instruction of what's ahead. He wants to pour out his wisdom into your heart. How great is the Father that he lavishes on us that we should be called children of God. Thanks for being with us. Have a great weekend.